Patrick Moran here, host of the Moranalytics Podcast with a little Moranalytics Podcast Extra, some bonus audio content exclusive to this YouTube channel. That little red subscribe button down just below, if you click that, that little bell next to it, you'll get notifications when new audio content is released. Starting to pump out a lot more exclusive audio content to this channel, building up our subscriber base. So go hit that little button. Today I wanna to talk, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time I came up with five underrated reasons why the Buffalo Bills defeated Tennessee on Sunday and that they're going into their bye at four and one right now. I'm not talking about Josh Allen playing well. Everybody already knows that. Not talking about Tremaine Edmonds becoming one of the best young linebackers in the NFL. Everybody already knows that. Not talking about Jordan Phillips having three sacks. Everybody already knows that. Everybody already knows about Duke Williams having a really good NFL debut. Everybody already knows that Jerry Hughes did his thing like he always does. I'm talking about five kind of under the radar reasons why Buffalo went into Nashville on Sunday with the home crowd, by the way, that was probably outnumbered by Buffalo Bills fans and beat Tennessee 14-7. I'm going to start right away. Number five, the defensive ends not named Jerry Hughes, the, the no-name guys, the guys who don't fill up the stat sheet. And Jack Loss's case literally didn't have anything on the stat sheet, but he still played a very good game. Played half the snaps on the defense. One play. Taylor Luane, by the way, I don't know what he's thinking about talking all that shit on Twitter to Shaq Lawson. And the guy just served a suspension for drugs and he played like he was on drugs on Sunday. I don't know how good of a tackle he is. The other 15 games that he's out there, but I'll tell you what, he didn't do nothing against Buffalo. He did not look good at all. Anyway, Shaq beat him really bad on an inside play, which allowed Jordan Phillips to stun to the outside and get one of his three sacks. I thought Shaq played really well. He does his job, man. He's a good run defender. And even if he's not getting the tackles, he's doing his job. He's forcing guys inside. He's not getting beat. He's not getting caught inside. Uh, Trent Murphy had a really good game before he got hurt. He only had one tackle again, but it was for a loss. And he did his job, man. He got in Marcus Mariota's face a couple times. And then Daryl Johnson got his first NFL sack. So the defensive ends, even beyond Jerry Hughes, had a very good game. At number four, Isaiah McKenzie, very big play. I don't know if it's called a shovel pass, a, a quick little pitch, whatever you want to call it. Technically, it was a forward pass. So he took it, went to the right, got one block. I believe it was from Dawson Knox. And what a good move on a race for 46 yards. It was a huge play in the game. It culminated in Duke Williams scoring on that touchdown. The Bills go ahead touchdown. Isaiah McKenzie had a very big part of that. Only had eight snaps, but that was a big play. And I'll tell you what, briefly here, I don't want to get on a big Zay Jones rant right now or anything like that. But it wasn't, I don't think anyway, it was just Duke Williams having his NFL debut and looking good. I also think that Isaiah McKenzie making a big play probably played some role in the Brandon Bean's decision Sunday night into Monday morning, Monday afternoon, whatever, that made Zay Jones even more expendable. Isaiah McKenzie's got a little role on this team. It's not a big one, but it could be an important one. And I thought that play was one of the most important plays in the entire game on Sunday. Number three, Laugh if you want. I really don't care. But Corey Bohork has had a really good game on Sunday. And I thought he played a nice little role in Buffalo's win. We know the disaster that happened last week. Not his fault, by the way, that punt. But um, that got blocked in return for a touchdown against the England. Ended up being the difference at the end of the day. He also shanked a, like a 22-yard punt at, during that game as well. So he was terrible last week. I call, kind of called for his head. Thought he might get cut. Glad he didn't because I tell you what. I thought he looked really good in Tennessee. He had six punts. He averaged 50 yards, net 43. Four of those six punts were downed inside the 20. And here's the biggest deal, okay? When you have a great defense like Buffalo, you don't want to turn the ball over. You don't want to give up points on special teams. And you don't want to give up even a big return to make a team like Tennessee only have to go the short field. Listen to the Tennessee Titans drive starts off those six times that Corey Bohork has punted. They started at their own 20, their own 10, their own 12, their own 13, their own 14, and their own 20. Again, no shanks, no blocks. Tennessee never got the ball off a punt and had to go less than 80 yards for a touchdown. Corey Bohork has very good game. Number two, John Feliciano. This guy's been a revelation this year. He was a very low-key signing, kind of a depth guy. That's what we all thought, but he won a starting job at guard during training camp in the preseason. And on Sunday, Mitch Morris got hurt in the second quarter, turned his ankle, was out for the rest of the game, and John Feliciano played very well at center. That could have easily been a disaster. Josh Allen 
didn't practice at all during the week because of the concussion protocol. Well, he did practice, but no contact. Who knows how much he actually did. But the point is, those two, they don't have a lot of chemistry. Feliciano could have easily had some bad snaps. It could have been a disaster is what I'm saying. When your starting center goes out, that could get ugly real quick. Didn't happen. Feliciano has filled in all season pretty well as a starter. And I thought he was really good at center. I don't think the Bills offense missed a beat with uh, Morris out and Feliciano at center. Now, that's not something I want to see long term. I'd rather see Feliciano at guard and Morris at center, of course. Point being, though, John Feliciano, when he had to step in at center, he did a very good job. So that was number two. And then the number one reason, and this is not being talked about nearly enough, the one way to ensure that Marcus Mariota does not get lucky and go 60, 70, 80 yards and tie the game or maybe win it at the end is to make sure he doesn't get the ball, right? Well, the Buffalo Bills, who did not run the football very well for most of the game, they got the ball, 4-12 left in the game, and Tennessee never saw it again. Nine plays, 50 yards, four first downs, Three different guys got a first down. TJ Yeldon got a first down. Frank Gore ran for two first downs. Josh Allen ran for one to put the game away. See ya. Buffalo Bills, 4-1. Tennessee never touched the ball again. So that is my personal five under the radar reasons why the Buffalo Bills defeated Tennessee on Sunday, 14-7. Again, if you enjoy hearing some of this original audio content, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Of course, don't forget about the Moranalytics podcast. New episodes every Tuesday and every Friday available on all major podcasting platforms. I'll catch you on the flippity flip. Bye.